Welcome to Zoomtopia Studio. I want to be here. Awesome. My name is Michelle Gator. I'm the Customer Experience Product Marketing Lead, and I am very excited to be joined by Chris Blackstone, um, who is our Director, Digital Workplace and End User Computing at Convera. Yes. Perfect. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today. A lot has changed over the last few years with organizations, ranging from fully remote to hybrid to fully in office. There's been a lot of change, as you know. Um, in your opinion, what's the biggest win you get out of challenging our traditional ways of working? I think for me, it feels like we've, I don't want to say fully democratized technology, but I feel like new ways of working have empowered people for themselves to work differently or people who maybe have been less comfortable in traditional working environments feel more comfortable participating in meetings or people who may have historically been more junior level employees, I think feel a little bit more um, empowered that they can suggest new ways of working, yeah. suggest new ways of using technology. We found a lot of like the Zoom AI companion solutions have really been championed by people outside of our product and tech group because it really enables them to do their jobs. And I wonder if we would have had that same kind of empowerment if we were still in a more traditional working environment, traditional kind of expectations that come along with that. Yeah, such a good point. It really has opened a lot of doors for us with that. Definitely. Yeah. That's great. So connectivity, super important in today's environment, right? Especially in the remote and hybrid work environment. So what are you doing to foster a culture of connectivity and collaboration among your dispersed team? I think it starts, you know, our vision is to create an industry-leading employee technology experience. Part of that is we have to understand what our peers around the company do as part of their job. Are they creating documents? Are they mostly scheduling meetings? Are they mostly having chat conversations with people? And once you kind of understand those personas, then we can start to really narrow in and look at what technologies are going to help them to be most effective in that. So if we have people that are mostly having their time in meetings, how can we use AI Companion in their meetings to help them get meeting summaries? If they're creating a lot of documents, we're doing a lot of exploration with Zoom Team Chat connected to SharePoint sites so they can have the power of chat, but still have that ability to collaborate on documents. And particularly document collaboration is one where when it's bad, people really know it's bad and it really is a drain on their productivity and a drain on themselves. And so they have kind of an expectation of how it should work. I think everyone kind of assumes that like document collaboration should always be like a Google Doc. Right. If it was going at any point, I can make my changes. A lot of the real world isn't that way, but how can we kind of approach that level of detail and engagement and how they're working together and understanding um, that the needs are going to change across the organization. And we're a global company, even within my organization of, of 18 people, I've got, I think, eight or nine time zones represented in those people. So there's never a time of day where we all can be together. Our collaboration is not just that kind of real time working a document together, but how can we asynchronously collaborate on things without the expectation of an immediate response? I think that's another one of those who look at like how things have changed. I think people that are maybe less comfortable speaking up or, may, or um, being kind of forthright, if you have an asynchronous culture where we are entrusting and empowering people to do their job, but in the time that's appropriate for them, I think those people can collaborate in deeper ways because they are under the pressure of, I have to reply to this message that I got at 9 p.m. at night when it's when I'm you know, not working till the next day. So yeah. really, there's a lot of tools we now have available with us in Zoom that made collaboration so much more effective than we had previously. Oh, that's, that's so great to hear. And I'm sure your employees really are appreciative of the fact <laughs> And you make it very easy for them to collaborate and not at all hours of the yeah. day and being able to, to, to keep that continuity going, yeah. right? Between, yeah. between employees, no matter what time zone they're in. Yeah. Definitely. That's awesome. Um, so chatbots, AI-powered virtual assistants, um, or blockchain have potential to really revolutionize customer experience and financial services. So how do you envision taking advantage of those technologies um, in your communication environment? For us, it's understanding who we are internally and who we are externally. I think the, you know, we're not entirely sure how AI is going to be involved in how we work externally, collaborate externally, but in inside of Convera, we're already finding benefits. Um, you know, the AI meeting summaries and smart recordings and things like that, 
make it easier for people, I think, to be engaged and have artifacts that live with them after the fact. I think it's also understanding that like AI as a name is really intimidating and scary. People think of the Terminator. <laughs> and true. we want them to think of it's, it's technology that is allowing people to be more effective. Yeah. So for us at Conveyor, we're thinking through, okay, so we have these smart meeting summaries. How can we take those and make them actionable to people? How can we get that information to the CRM? How can we help managers use those meeting summaries to provide maybe performance improvement items for their staff members? How can we make them not just a text document, but an act actionable kind of next steps? And yeah. we're still very new in that journey, but that's, I think, when people start being scared of AI and they see it as really kind of their partner in helping them be more effective in what they want to do. 100%. I couldn't have said that better myself. I think that's exactly it. When you can show people how it empowers them and makes them more productive and makes their day easier, yeah. it really makes, it takes the scary off of it. Oh, this isn't some, you know, crazy thing. This is, this is great and I'm glad it's here. <laughs> yeah. I think it also, it's also about helping people be able to maybe have some needed separation at work, but not feel like they've, they've kind of left everybody on their own. This week being at the conference, it's been really helpful because my staff are able to run meetings that normally maybe I would have to participate in, but I can get the meeting summaries right. and they're able to be fully present in the meeting and not feel like they have to take super detailed notes to, to, for me when I get back. And so, you know, it, it also provides, I think, people the ability to get time for themselves or be able to be spread further, but still be able to be engaged um, and, and, and have it not be so kind of separate from what they needed you at that particular time. Absolutely. It takes the pressure off a little, allows you to be present with what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, that's such such a great point. So as customers' expectations continue to evolve, how are you balancing innovation with the need for security and risk management um, within your digital strategies? I think for us, it starts with a very close partnership between people like myself who naturally want to push the, push the solutions, push the engagement, push the collaboration, and your security and compliance organizations who stereotypically are much more like they want to hold things tight and they, they some would say they want to limit innovation, but I don't think that's, that's the case. I have a very close partnership with our security folks and our compliance folks. And, you know, when we rolled out AI meeting summaries, um, talk with them, they're like, yeah, you know, we think it has promise, but we, we may want to make sure that just the host gets a summary. Great, fully on board with that. Now we can roll out the entire organization. So when you have that close partnership with, those other stakeholders internally, one, I think you can get ahead of a lot of kind of the roadblocks that may come, but they also become a group that can be even a partial advocate for it. Because if someone goes to them and says, hey, like we have this, is it okay to use? Those groups can say, oh yes, they're fully vetted. We're ready to go. You guys can use it. And so when you have that kind of solid partnership as a foundation, you can move much more rapidly when it comes to things that could be on the margins or you also have an opening for those groups to be like, hey, like, you know, we saw this, you know, we thought it was okay before, but we looked at it a little bit more and now we're not quite so sure. It's a lot easier to take that kind of feedback when you have someone who you had that really good relationship with. And so I think for us, um, it's, it's just been a, it's, it's very marked departure from other places I've been at. And so we're really excited to partner with the group because they're also able to take advantage of these features and the benefits them in their role. And so from their perspective, selfishly, they want to gain the benefit too. Sure. I, I love that. That compromise, finding that balance that works well for the company, but then also delivers all that productivity and enhancements and things for, for the employees. Yeah, exactly. Everyone included. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. All right. Well, Chris, that was all I wanted to talk with you about today. Thank you so much for taking the time. Absolutely. Thank you for the time. Thank you.